Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Excited to be with you here and to talk about what's going on. Goodbye, water tiger. Hello, water rabbit. Hey, please say hello. And uh, I'd love to see, you know, who's here and, and post your name. And I love that we, if we can interact some, that makes it, I, uh, you know, we can support each other. Oh, Paula. Hello, Gong Hai Fat Choi. Yes. Hey, Lois, you're logged in as me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hello, hello, hello. Ah, Catherine, good morning. Linda, good morning. Lisa, good morning. Hello, my friends. So good to be here with you. Yeah. I'm just gonna hang tight here a minute. To, um, yeah. I'm, hello, water rabbit year, eh? Isn't it good to have a new year coming? New beginnings? Hey, Lois, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Today's format. Hey, Larry, nice to see you here. Today's format is uh, different from my previous formats in that it, it's, I have written down a whole bunch of questions. Hey, Joanne and Rini, really nice to see you both here. So yeah, today's format is different in that I have written down a bunch of questions. I'm not doing specific astrological insights to each individual one in that. I actually really wanted to share with you my insights of the last I've been really contemplating the last year, you know, actually year even what's going on and why is it going on and what's the bigger picture and I want to talk to you about that. Hi Vanessa and Cindy, nice to have you here. Thank you for posting and saying hello. Yeah, you know, and, and Cindy you put their gong hai fa choi, you know, Cantonese would spell it differently than Mandarin. So, you know, it gets confusing that there and then somebody who has a street slang from some other province might spell it differently. So. I think the intention is what counts. So I'm going to get started here because uh, and, and, and I'm excited to be here with you. And I'm so grateful. That's actually the first thing I want to say is one of the biggest things that I have really learned in the last year is that everything happens for you, not to you. And why is that the case? Because as souls, we get the opportunity to work with all energy to rise our vibration. The opportunity at the end is on us. And so I am grateful for the blessings. I'm grateful for the hardships. I'm grateful for the opportunities. I'm grateful for the miracles, everything of 2022. And I'm also ready to continue to change my story that life doesn't have to be so hard. Hi, Annette. Nice to see you, right? Wouldn't that be nice, guys? Life doesn't have to be so hard. We don't always have to strive. But how do we change it that life isn't always so hard? I think some of this is reframing how we look at metaphysics, you know, because it's not always about win or lose. Sometimes it's about being able to accept what's happening and to have compassion and to join with others. I've noticed that those are some of the times yeah, thanks, Paula. It's like that I notice those are some of the times where I feel happiest. It's not when I get the biggest contracts. It's not that when 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 I you know have the biggest successes. I'm just really, really become aware of of this whole concept of win or lose. I want to create win-win in my life and everything. And so part of that is actually acceptance. Part of that is actually looking at changing how I look at things. And so, yeah, we are here together. I have a couple things that I just want to start here. Joining together, this is my purpose, to join together with consciousness, to awaken, 
heal, transform, and empower ourselves. Now, awaken is actually one of the biggest parts of that. That's such that's the biggest opportunity that's coming with period nine. But this whole awakening thing is realizing how powerful we are as manifestors, all of us. Doesn't matter if you're a chief level seven, doesn't matter if you're chief level one or a tortoise or some of you who know metaphysics would know that. It doesn't matter who you are or what level you are. We are all manifestors and we're all waking up to that. And that is really cool. Yeah, hi, Melanie. And so I wanna ask you first, it's like, what do you think is a good life? You know, and I ask this question in my classes and that, like, what is a good life, you know? And, and so, because how energy, if everything is energy and we are interacting to energy, we have to wake up to the fact that somehow we are influencing the outcomes. And then by changing how we think, we can actually change the outcome of what's coming, right? And so to me, a good life, you know, too, I mean, the, there's so many different de definitions, right? But the Chinese one that I was given many years ago that has really struck with me is to be born into a family of good reputation. Now, I would say even to be born into a family of good reputation, that could be one where you are supported, right? Let's just say that. I'm not saying rich because you can be born. I have lots of very wealthy clients and yes, technically on one level, their, their families have good reputations, but they're not happy. The people that I see that are the happiest are ones that have good relationships with family and friends. Now, sometimes we can't have good relationships with family, but the opportunity with metaphysics and the opportunity with energy, when we start looking at all the different, how to use feng shui and things, if we can create connection where we feel supported, listened to, loved. Isn't that the best life, right? So yeah, hello and welcome to all of you. Yeah, Claudia and Carol, beautiful to see you here. Thank you. You know, who am I? I've been in the field of metaphysics for a long, long time. And actually just before I get to that too, it's like, yeah, welcome to all of you. I am not someone who just blindly drinks the Kool-Aid right? Like I have read over 2000 books in, in just feng shui. And I've studied with eight different masters, right? Because partly it's like I had this, everybody has, you know, yes, they say certain things the same, and some of them actually are very different. But I would observe what they are saying. And I would observe their lives. And I think there are some very powerful metaphysicians out there who aren't happy, because they're so they have such a fear complex that that drives them to control, you know, like it, it's not fun to be over controlling, is it? When we're over controlling, we're in fear. So to me, the whole goal, especially as we're entering into period nine is we're trying to move away from fear. This is the biggest astrological influence that's coming. The last four years with all the water that's been there and there's still a little bit of water this year, water represents fear in Chinese metaphysics. And so we have been dealing with looking at our fears. How many of you have been successful with that in the sense of transforming that, you know? So transforming it, like, because COVID was such a good example of looking at our fears. We all had so many fears. Uh, can, can, you know, like I was washing my money, you know, after coming back because I was afraid. And then at one point I just thought, wow, I am really stuck in this fear construct. It's not the truth. I'm actually okay. And this is not about, I don't want to get into conspiracy theories or not, because there's all kinds of places we can go with that. I was just looking at individually. It's like, oh, there's all this water. We're in fear. What's the opportunity to release fear? Because as we have yeah, a fear complex, as we evolve and awaken, as we go more into period nine, we are going to see that we can choose our emotions with, with training this is not easy but the first step in order to choose an emotion that takes you into the life you want now and that's actually one of my biggest goals too i want to make metaphysics simple how many of you are going crazy with the should i do this activation should i clear this should i do that should i do this and yes at higher levels i do do that but if anything makes you crazy or starts making you feel like you're doing it wrong, 
Do you think it's going to help you? No, because what's the energy that's happening inside of you then? Fear. And any time, this is how energy works. Whatever's inside of me, I am transmitting outside. Okay, so my biggest thing, looking back on the year of the water tiger, and then before that into the ox and the rat and the pig, all these years of water that we've had the last four years, I see how that has been the opportunity to look at fear and to choose differently, to consciously start leading my life in a different way, which means then following people that I think are proactive about having more joy in their life. Yeah, and it'll be reflected back to us, exactly. So my teachings have changed in the sense that, yes, I still teach in-depth metaphysics, but I am now teaching this all from a perspective of how you interact with that and with proactive actions as to how you can move forward. So those of you that follow me regularly, you know that I've introduced Moon Circle, right? And so in the Moon Circle too, one of the big things with Moon Circle, a free event, right? And a community. And every month we have at least 200 people register and you're either there live or later, which is great because I love this community. You see, we are all connected. We are all connected. And you guys know this. If you walk into a room of angry people, what's the chances of you staying happy? Hard, right? Or if you watch a movie of extreme violence, how are you going to feel at the end, right? So by consciously creating a community where we start looking at our emotions, because our emotions direct our actions. And all of you know this with whether you're practicing chi men or different types of activations with motivation, emotions are the key. So I've been breaking, looking back in the year of the water tiger, I've seen the opportunities for me to um, really work with that. So. Yeah, let's, let me see some of my questions. Why do we study metaphysics and astrology? Okay, that's one of the questions here. So I have a bunch of questions here that I'm going to answer. And if you guys have a great question, you can put it in there as well. And I'll see if it's pertinent to what I'm thinking about. Yeah, thanks. Lois just posted the link for the next moon circle. So make sure you register. I'd love to see you there. And just for those of you that don't know, the format is it's an hour and a half. And I do some overall looking at what's happening with the energies. And so full moon, why we do full moon? Because full moon is for releasing. It's the perfect time for releasing. And actually today, tomorrow is the new moon. Chinese New Year is always on the new moon, which is the time of new intentions. So this is where we're at with new intentions, setting energies for the new year. Well, we get to do that 12 times a year with new moons set new intentions and 12 times a year we get to forgive and release what if that just became your practice along with the feng shui and that because why do we need to forgive and release so that we can make room for more love okay so that we can make room for more love so yes overall i mean period nine why do, well, actually i'm jumping around here guys i'm sorry it's like my mind is on fire why do we first of all study metaphysics and astrology? We study metaphysics and astrology, or I have for the last 50 years now, okay, really started studying Western astrology when I was 15 and, and then crystals and tarot and all those different things. And I had results it, to some degree with all those things. But the component that was missing with a lot of those is I did not factor myself into them. I always thought if something out there changed, I would be happy. What I actually see now is the biggest thing with metaphysics is understanding how powerful our energies are and how that influences the field. And in Chinese metaphysics, we call that heaven, earth, and man. And as we enter into period nine, which is too much for me to all go into here, but period nine, the age of fire, it is going to shed light on our power. Now, and what do we choose if we realize we have power? Let's break this down to really simple. Fear or love. Now, what is fear? Anytime you have fear, you are separating. And anytime you have love, you are joining. So what if it was as simple as in your life, in your heart, being open with compassion to everything that is, because then you are willing to work with energy. And here's the other thing that I know, energy is neutral. 
It is how we work with it that has the results. There, you know, winter is not bad. Summer is not good. Fire is not good. Water is not bad. They just come with energies. Yes, we say joy, fire is more desirable, but if we only had joy, we would, without fear, we wouldn't even actually know how to look at it. And as we come from souls into these personalities that we are, we get to awaken to the true energies of who we are, which is the soul. That's actually what I see is the big picture of what's going on. So yeah, let's look a little bit at 2022, the year of the water tiger. So this by many teachers has been called a year of spiritual growth. The water tiger itself, yes, the main lesson of period nine is transformation. Or let's actually even say, what's transformation ultimately? Because transformation could be, you know, you become a rock or transformation could be you become enlightened. Lighten up. So that's actually the biggest lesson that's coming with period nine is we get to lighten up. If we don't work with that energy, we create more karma. And that's actually also the biggest theme in my teachings now and in my readings and all my consultations is karma versus dharma. So karma to me is the fate that you were born with and dharma is your consciousness taking that blueprint and creating a conscious life, one that has joining and love. Everybody can do that. And so karma versus dharma. So many of us, especially actually those of you that are spiritual workers, okay? And I call you a spiritual worker if you're working with feng shui. And I know many of you on this call are. Most of you that are my students in that were born with very heavy blueprints, right? Heavy blueprints, a lot of family struggles, a lot of different things to overcome but you could not be the light workers that you are that you are bringing to the world if you didn't learn to forgive and to work with that and so the really wonderful thing for me with the things that i'm doing looking back is i just see creating community is so important together we are more we're all connected and and embracing the wonderful parts of all of us so period water tiger year was a year of what we called spiritual portals. So in Chinese metaphysics, some of the pillars, 10 of the 60 pillars are what we call spiritual pillars. So for those of you that are practitioners, anytime that there's a year that's a spiritual pillar or a chart that is a spiritual pillar, that person has more of a connection, if you will, to maybe the bigger picture. Doesn't make them better, doesn't make them worse. There is no worse, they just are what they are, okay? We don't wanna judge because anytime we put judgments on something, we say it's bad, we're separating. We can be neutral about it, we can assess it, but it's how you assess it that starts creating, like, don't we all want to live in a better world? Don't we all wanna live in a world where our neighbors are taken care of, our children are taken care of, where we feel supported, where we feel heard? Well, who's going to create that change? It doesn't start out there. It starts with us. So the water tiger year and the years before have been a year of fear and different things where we actually have had opportunities, different teachers showing up, different things happening where we can actually look at things differently. All right. And so the other thing that happened this past year, there's still a couple weeks left before the solar year, the lunar and the solar year, New Year's are a bit different. Every month, starting with February of last year, has been a month of the next 10 years, 12 years, okay? So the water rabbit year is the same as the water rabbit month was in water tiger year. So the opportunity in the last year has been to set seeds of intention. So because energy follows thought, Right. And in a way, I think we're all baby manifestors in some ways. I mean, some of us can, I think manifesting money is easy. Manifesting energy to have a better life, happiness, that actually requires a bit more work. Right. And that's where a lot of us are at. And so this whole thing of every month of the last 12 months has been 
the next 12 years going forward. So they have been seeds of what's coming. And so some of the things that I consciously did with this awareness in 2022 was I exercised more, I drank more water, I was conscious about who I spent my time with, you know, as personal friends, I was conscious about my spiritual journey and the types of things that were important to me and I took actions toward those. So those were all intentions I set. Don't worry if you didn't do that. The universe is always going to offer you opportunities. I do not like when consultants say, oh, you missed the opportunity. I disagree with that. I think that there's life is what it is. And we move from that point forward. I mean, a lot of my clients will say, what will you do if you give me bad news? I do not give people bad news. I give people empowerment news. Just like it's up to you, though, to judge how you feel about that. Like, so if I say it's raining and you need an umbrella, are you going to cry? No. Or if I say, you get an umbrella. If I say your marriage is under the microscope this year, does that mean that's bad news? No, only if you decide you don't want to look at it. And so what actually happened again for many, many people in Water Tiger Year is the things that were not working in our life came up for us to look at. So many people, health issues, work issues, uh, relationship issues, all those types of things, right? And why did that come up? Because let's look at the bigger existential thing. It's not just like, oh, this is your wealth month. What happens with that? How do you use that? Well, the bigger question is, what do you want? And how are you going to get there, right? And then how can we use astrology and metaphysics to get there to support us? But isn't it really that we just want to be happy? So Water Tiger Year brought up for a lot of people fear because they needed to make changes. Is the water rabbit year going to be as painful? No, I don't think so. However, because we're entering into period nine, okay, and, and so you guys also, I've been doing metaphysics, Chinese metaphysics for 30 years now. So I was there when period seven changed to period eight, and I was there from period eight now to period nine. There's a lot of snake oil salesmen out there you know, who, who capitalize on the fear of people. And so that happened at the end of period seven. I saw people changing their doorways. I saw people doing all these things. And, and, and in a way, it was in some ways great, I think, in the sense that it, metaphysics exploded in period seven. Okay, exploded. Um, you could go to bookstores and, and hippie stores and all that type of stuff, right? Exploded workshops, uh, all personal growth and all that type of stuff. But in period seven, it was not that deep. Period eight. So in each period, like astrological periods, the only reason they exist, if you will, is the vibration of that time period is there to teach us an opportunity. We can call it a lesson. We can call it an opportunity, but it's an opportunity. So the opportunity as we finish period eight, of which the image is a mountain, is what are your values? Because a mountain represents values, okay? What do you have integrity? Did you embody the energy of the mountain? Are you consistent? Are you reliable? Or are you an earthquake, right? How able are you to manage your emotions? Well, certainly if you look back on the last 20 years, you can see that the, the financial crisis of 2008, the financial crises that were happening now, COVID and all those things, we got rattled collectively with all these things. Why? So that we could decide what are my values and am I true to them? Now, if you have a value of love, okay, are you loving? That's actually the question. Because if you're not loving, love is not your value. If you're an angry person, Anger is your value. Now that's sometimes hard to look at, but it just requires, and here's the thing too, you cannot change what you are not aware of. And that's actually one of the greatest gifts of astrology too, because it could kind of show you what's coming, what might come up to the surface, and then you can do the inner work. Because I'm going to tell you in metaphysics, the biggest thing that you can change is yourself. And then use feng shui to support you to be a better you because your vibration is actually creating the field out there. And so I want you to have a good life. All right. So I'm going to say to question everything. Okay. Question everything. Now, 
why do I say question everything? Because somebody says, even if I tell you, do this activation or do this or do that, check inside yourself. How does that feel? Right? How does that feel? If somebody is telling you to do something and it is bringing up alarm or anxiety, I don't think you should do it because then you are in a state of I'm not enough, fear or whatnot. So sometimes maybe just regular cleaning is what you need to do. Like you can do some action that makes your life better. But if you do, like people are worried about the five this year, you know, like it's a very powerful five. All those things can be used properly. But if they bring you fear, I think it's time to put metaphysics aside because metaphysics is meant to empower you. So I'm going to say question everything and take a break unless you feel in your heart that this is, I'm connected, I'm solid, I can do this, right? Because it's we're all connected. The art of war. I want to talk a little bit about the art of war. And this actually from my very first, okay, so I had feng shui teachers in the early 90s who were from North America who, who were not that in-depth a teacher. Bless them. They taught me a lot about energy. They taught me about different things, but they did not know classical feng shui. My first classical feng shui teacher, a Chinese man that I took a class from, I flew to Italy and I was there for three weeks taking these classes. And he's talking about win, lose and us against them and all that stuff. And I just thought, wow, isn't feng shui about energy and you're teaching all energies connected and now you're saying it's us against them. Doesn't that mean that if I attack you, you're going to attack me? Like I couldn't wrap my mind ahead of it, but this is what happens. When you know how to work with energy, it's actually very powerful and it becomes very seductive because it's like, oh, look, you know, I can make money. I can do this. I can do that. The, I, what's going to come with period nine and what's coming is that we are going to take more responsibility for the bigger picture. All right. And so this is an important part. So, yeah, I the art of war win win is the motto, guys. It's not win-lose, right? There is enough for everybody. Now, it doesn't mean do your best product. Don't do it, right? But be the best that you can be, but you don't have to put other people down to, um, to be able to get ahead. You rely on yourself. Um, I see your question, Manuela. I'll get to that in a bit. So, Perhaps the single greatest paradigm shift that's coming to humans is that we are writing our own story. Now, by what that means is as a soul, we choose, we're awakening to the fact that we choose the moment we're born to. We choose to experience the initial parents and places that we're in. By accepting that we chose that, and by then accepting that we have power to work with that, right? We're not victims. We have the responsibility and ability to shape that into something positive, okay? So, you know, uh, who, okay, I just want to say a bit too, it's like some of the questions here. What methods do I use, okay? And feng shui and, and that, of course, first thing, I mean, I look at astrology, perhaps for my year planning, one of the first things I do is I look at the energies of the year in relationship to myself. I do this with all my clients as well. What's my luck cycle? What's all going on? And what are the opportunities based on that energy? This year's water and wood, right? So what is that to me? How can I best work with that? How's that interacting with my chart? Is it possible to supersede that to a degree and do things on my own that are different without those energies? Yes, it requires more effort. That's okay but I can work with it. So, but it's easier when we're in flow. So the first thing I do is I always look at the astrology. The second thing is then wherever I live or where people are living, I look at the outside environment of the land that they're in. Because all houses, 70% of all houses, the energy is determined by location. Okay. Then we look at the shape of the building and then we start doing formulas. So there's two types of energies. There's what you can see and there's what's invisible. When we get into the invisible energies, which is actually astrology and flying stars and, and all these formulas, eight mansions, Zhong uh, Kong Dagua, Qi Men, even in those types of things, we start, we start 
manipulating with magnetics, okay? So our bodies are mostly water. And so we are very influenced by magnetic energy. And so I've seen now with thousands of consultations that when you align to one direction or one hexagram or different things, you can activate them. Okay, so I work with those formulas as well. But really too, perhaps more is, is like I look at their charts and I go, what's the underlying issue that's creating the psychological block? What's the karma of this chart? Because most people aren't blocked by their feng shui. They're blocked by their faulty thinking. And so we all have faulty thinking. We all have, oh, my mom did this, my dad did this, I didn't have that. How do we work and release those so that we can create with metaphysics, right? More space for new energy to come in. I help clients, okay, so those are the formulas I use primarily. Um, I ask, I work with clients on, in the last year, people have been asking me like, you know, how, what kind of things do you do? I've worked with developers, I've worked with teachers, I've helped people get pregnant. Now, despite, how do you help people get pregnant? Oh, one of the coolest things that happened in 2022 was also working with acupuncturists and TCM doctors, okay? And doing more education on that, especially because education is my favorite thing. Originally, feng shui and Chinese astrology was part of Chinese medicine. But what happened with the Cultural Revolution is it became illegal in, in China, okay? It was made illegal. And I'm not exactly sure, probably out of fear, but also I think there was so much hocus pocus out there that, you know, there's people out there who will say, oh, if you buy this jade amulet, you'll be lucky forever. Oh, if you buy, you know, this, this talisman and put it up on the wall, it'll change all your luck. If it was that simple, wouldn't we all be skinny and rich and have children that did well and, you know, no drug and alcohol problems and all that stuff? Like, you know, <laughs> it's not just that simple. There's more to it, right? And so to help somebody get pregnant, what I look at is you look at the energy of the year and when does the baby element pop up? Then I might advise that that's the best time to get try to get pregnant. But I might also see in the chart, for instance, who is there a mother issue or a father issue? Because awareness is curative. So if we see the problem that you decided, problem may be wrong word, but we, if we see the blueprint that you were born with and it shows that there's an issue here with this person, by resolving that, it opens the door. See, we can transcend our charts with consciousness. That is the biggest thing. We can transcend. And this is to me the gift of what's coming with period nine. We are going to be able to transcend the limitations of what we are. However, how can you transcend? Is it just going to be like, oh, here's this magic wand, which we're having fun with and manifesting magic. And I'll talk about that at the end. But transcending energy requires you have to see what are the problems. And that's where many of us are at, is we can have a good day and then the next day be in fear again as the ego goes crazy showing us where the problems are. Now, what I'm going to encourage you to do as we move forward through this last beautiful year of the water rabbit, which, you know, yes, there will be economic issues and yes, there will be different things, but water feeding wood is a gentle energy, which is going to allow us to take a deep breath, to maybe do some contemplation, to go for a walk, and to start transforming our thoughts. And by transforming our thoughts, we will start to transform the world. That requires looking at what do you value, back to period eight. Now, do you even have a list of what your values are? Because you can say you value connection and yet you make money at the detriment of your family, right? And so now you it is not your value. Do you value kindness? Are you kind? Or is every day an angry day, a blustery day, you know, a judgment day? Then that's what you value, okay? So we have one year left to really consciously choose what are your values, do you have integrity, and to step in that. And period nine in many ways has already started. It'll formally start February 20, February 4th, 2024. We are entering into, I think, for about a five or six year period 
where the fire is going to burn a little bit. But you know what? It, it does, it's going to bring joy. It's going to bring different things. But it's also going to burn for those of us that are on a path of awakening. Why is this path of awakening? So that our lifetimes can be easier. You know, that our families can have easier life. So yeah, do you want this year to be a year of inspired action or fear, right? And so those are mottos. So yeah, what are your goals? You know, what are your goals? So uh, I there's a question here. So if you guys have some questions, you can post some questions. Somebody said she's worried about star two as your bedroom is in the east. Well, Manuela, it's not so simple to just answer that question. I need to know what your gua is. But really, uh, just put metal in there is one thing. Sleep in a good direction. There's many higher level methods by you could sleep with the sitting star eight, you get a combo 10. You can sleep with the sitting star seven, you get a combo, you know, a hey two combo. If you, we can neutralize stars in different ways. But if the forms outside are good, now, star two, actually, I want to also say, I don't call any of the stars sickness or calamity. I've changed in the last two years how I look at the flying stars. Star two is an earth star. An earth star, if you are stuck in your life, oh, so it's your hey two combo. You're good. No worries. And so if, if you have stagnation in your life, where you are stuck and not acting proactively on what your higher self, your soul is saying, oh, Manuela, you know, did you do this? Are you loving? Are you that? Then it might manifest as sickness. But the star too only manifests as sickness if you're not working with the energy. Okay. Star five, the most powerful star there is, is a star of transformation. Now, yes, we do take into account forms. We do take into account timeliness. But here's the bigger question. Why would someone live in a house that has bad feng shui? Okay, let's look at that even from a bigger way, right? Because many, many people do. I've That was actually one of the most curious things for me as I really looked at energy over the years. Because you have a subconscious belief that you're not worthy. Okay, so if you have a subconscious belief that you are not worthy and you're not working with that consciously, your vibration is I'm not worthy. And what your law of attraction is, is I'm not worthy. So you pick up places that reflect that. Now, yes, we can move to a place. Now, here's the thing, too. This was so curious for me about 15 years ago when I really started to learn this because I was like, I know what really good, well, okay, what is really good feng shui? Most people would say really good feng shui is a house that makes lots of money. To me now, I've changed that. To, it's more houses that support really good family relationships and connections. Because if that's happening, usually if a person has right thinking, money follows, right? Money follows. But even places like, you know, you go to a house of people that are wealthy and then the water is in the wrong place. And then you find out that the wife is having an affair or the husband's having an affair. The relationship, yes, money is activated, but peace of mind is not. Well, why would you live in a house like that? Because you don't believe worthy of having a good relationship. So as a soul, you're, you chose this blueprint in this lifetime so that you can release that karma and then you can step into your dharma and that's what's happening with period nine we are going to awaken the fire is going to burn us then are we going to lighten or are we going to become heavier this is the choice so yeah Uh, <laughs> so I don't believe in conspiracy theories. All right. I don't see it that way. I see, so I'm not going to talk a lot about that. I think that there's stuff out there happening, but I think if I focus on that, I'm making more of that. I focus on people who are teaching light who are teaching how to work with energy, who are teaching how to have family, who are teaching community, right? That's where my focus is. And so everything, my choices every day that I make are either feeding 
a positive world or not. And so that's where my focus is every day. And so, yeah, that's easier said than done. And so I want to talk a little bit about the classes, and then I'm going to close this with an invocation. All right. And so today is a little bit different. I just wanted to talk about the opportunities of water rabbit year are so much one like water feeding wood, new growth, new opportunities. Every month I'll be coming to you on conscious conversations with individual looks at your day master and, and you know, how to work with the energies and brief things with feng shui. But I'm really going to encourage you wherever you decide to be in community to choose to be with people that support you. Yes, awareness is curative. Awareness is curative. What are you focused on? Right? If you walk into a room that's filled with fear, walk out. If you're doing violent video games, stop. Do things. And yeah, they're boring sometimes, right? Our ego loves to be stimulated with a drama. I made a conscious choice years ago, less drama and simpler, because what happens then? My heart rests. And when my heart rests, I can give love. Thank you. You know, where your thoughts go, chi follows. So I have a really cool, so my teaching is changing, all right? So I just want to share that with you guys, in that I'm doing a, an astrology immersion class, Botsy immersion class this year. And the focus is, yeah, of course, you're going to learn astrology, but it, and I'm going to introduce more about how to look at the day masters and the 60 jutsu and all those different things. It's going to be 12 weeks. It's starting in March. It's not up on the website yet, but and I'm only taking 10 students, 10 new students in that. OK, so if you really want to go deeper into Batsu with an immersion class, that's something to talk to me about. There's going to be simpler classes as well. Another one is because I feel People take classes and then they don't go do it. You actually need help and support. So that's my goal is to be more helpful and supportive for those who show up. Hi, Adriana. Nice to see you. And so I have a Discover Your Purpose class, which is an introduction Chinese astrology class, which is coming up. Uh, I think it's March 18th. Lois is going to post it in the link where we look at what what blueprint, not just who are you in Chinese astrology, right? Like, but how can you take that blueprint and become the highest vibration of that? So we're going to look at that. What is your karma that you chose to be with? That will be, we'll look at your structure, but this is a different way of looking at it. And how can you work with that to create more ease? And what are your lessons? So like what opportunities are there in the water rabbit year? So I really want to empower you. So that's going to be a fun class that's coming up in March. We're creating a personalized calendar that will be in the class uh, on the web uh, on the website soon. So for those of you in date selection that want to have a personalized calendar, that's oh, February 18th. Thanks. It's February 18th. I don't even know my own dates and um, and manifesting magic. OK, so this is a class that has become a monthly membership class and it's like around thirty dollars a month. OK, this class we meet in the first Sunday of every month, and there's a private Facebook group, but the first Sunday of every month, I overview what's going on. It's an hour and a half. It's a bit of a workshop model, right? But it's not just feng shui, but yes, we do do feng shui and astrology. It's law of attraction. It's spiritual laws. It's crystals. It's psychology. It's goal setting. It's where are you stuck? Like so many people don't even know how to set a decent goal and it's, it's ritual. Okay, setting up an altar, smudging your house, doing different conscious, intentional actions, moving your life forward. And it's fun. Okay, it's fun. And it's a community of people supporting one another. Okay, because you want to hang out. I want to hang out with people who are consciously forwarding their life. All right, who consciously want to be part of the change. You're not part of the change if you're focusing on conspiracies, right? You are not. I love everybody, whether where wherever you are at, honestly, but I may not choose to hang out with you if you cannot control that. Now with Manifesting Magic, we are creating a community there. It's actually also called Living with Purpose, right? Isn't that what we all want? To live with purpose in a way that brings more love to our hearts? And then there's the full moon, okay? So these are the different things that are coming up. 
and that I'm focusing on in the year. And then later this year will be a tarot class that we're going to do a mastery tarot class. And I'm not actually sure if I'm going to teach feng shui this year. Um, I might do some private mentoring with that, you know, in the sense of some different people actually said, I'd like to become a feng shui, you know, to really become a feng shui consultant practitioner is a big study. All right. And so it's, I'm more interested. It, it actually hurts my heart when I teach people and I see they don't do anything. I actually want to help you get ahead. All right. So I want to end this on this last day of the water tiger year, first of all, with gratitude. And I just want to um, do an invocation here or an intention, if you will. Okay. And so I release the old and join with me, perhaps close your eyes and just have a thought. I release the old and all that does not serve me and blocks me. I release my burdens, my perceived pain and hardships, and I allow the light of the Tao, of the heavens, of the highest energies to open new paths and ease for me to travel. I call on all the beings of light for all of us and higher consciousness to be present and guide us as we move into the year of the water rabbit. Grant us all the courage to be the persons we long to be to make the changes we need in order to be happy. Isn't that just what we want? To be happy, to wake up relaxed. Please send in all our angels and beings from the light to support us, to help us to stop running away from our fears. Guide us to the insights and realizations that need to be seen for the actions that are best to be taken and for the people who can support us on our journey and the courage to get up each day. Now that's something I have guys is courage. And so by joining the things that we do, we can share each other's strengths and support each other. All right. Guide us to the life of our dreams and shine a light so bright that even when we're afraid, we know that we're not alone. May the light of love surround you. May the power of love protect you. And may the presence of the water rabbit bless your year. I am so looking forward to spending time with you in the next months to come. And please reach out um, and, and uh, consider joining some of the other offerings that we have. And so sincerely, I just wish you the very, very best in the water rabbit year. Thank you. If there's some questions here, I'm happy to answer a couple of questions and then I'm going to, uh, yeah, born in the fire horse year. So it'll be pivotal for you. And anybody who has lots of fire in their chart has a, as a, we all have different roles to play. Not one is right or one is wrong, but I would say somebody who has strong fire in their chart has more of a visible presence moving into period nine than others right and so leveling up yeah your 60 year return beautiful that's coming up yeah don't fear the fear yeah thank you everybody hi kim thank you catherine thank you annette thank you linda thank you tahawa thank you blessings to all Happy New Year.